Hello, this is Philip Neath. Uh, I am a rheumatologist from Seattle, Washington, direct the Division of Rheumatology Research at Swedish Medical Center, and I'm clinical professor at the University of Washington School of Medicine. What I would like to do today uh, is review uh, key abstracts that were presented uh, at the recent ACR meeting regarding psoriatic arthritis. The first study uh, is an interesting one in which uh, the question was asked, is psoriasis extent associated with prevalence of psoriatic arthritis? The lead authorship uh, of this abstract was from the University of Pennsylvania, Alexis Ogdi. Uh, it's from an epidemiology group led by a dermatologist, epidemiologist, Joel Gelfand, who's been working with a northern uh, England database uh, of primary care physician inputted uh, data on uh, different diseases. The basic take home message from this uh, was that uh, based on the extent of psoriasis, uh, that is patients having more extensive psoriasis, there was a greater likelihood of their having psoriatic arthritis. This is uh, important new knowledge because we're constantly seeking a biomarker indication of which patients might uh, develop psoriatic arthritis who have psoriasis, since psoriasis typically precedes the onset of arthritis. So this is one further clue about that. Another abstract also addressed a, the question of uh, uh, what risk factors exist uh, for the development of psoriatic arthritis. Again, from this uh, database uh, uh, in UK, uh, there was this suggestion uh, that obesity was a significant risk factor. That is, patients that had higher BMI were more likely to, to develop psoriatic arthritis ultimately. We know that obesity is a significant factor in psoriasis patients. This is potentially a uh, controllable risk factor. Uh, and we're increasingly interested in inflammatory cytokines arising uh, from uh, fat cells. Uh, so this is something that I think we should be paying attention to uh, and exhorting our psoriasis patients uh, to try to lose weight. Elaine Husney from the Cleveland Clinic uh, did a, uh, an analysis of a trial known as the Pristine trial uh, employing a tannercept uh, in psoriasis. And in this trial, she observed that metabolic syndrome, that is the presence of obesity, uh, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and so forth, uh, uh, had a high prevalence in both patients with uh, psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis and patients with psoriasis who did not have psoriatic arthritis. There was a difference, though, uh, uh, in that uh, patients to, who also had psoriatic arthritis in addition to psoriasis had a higher likelihood of having diabetes, hypertension, and as one might expect, a higher CRP. All of these are risk factors uh, for early cardiovascular morbidity and mortality, and again, important factors to be uh, focused on that are controllable in our patient population. And then lastly, regarding metabolic syndrome, uh, here is a uh, study from the Corona Registry uh, in which it was shown uh, that patients with psoriatic arthritis had a higher uh, proclivity of manifesting metabolic syndrome uh, than rheumatoid patients. And this was particularly uh, driven by elevation of triglycerides. Ultrasound is proving to be an important diagnostic tool uh, in our assessment of early uh, inflammatory arthritis patients and diagnosing uh, in inflammatory changes. Uh, in this particular study uh, by Alex uh, uh, Nig uh, from Munich, uh, who uh, uh, as a fellow was one of the prize fellows uh, at the uh, GRAPA a group for Research and Assessment of Psoriasis and Psoriatic Arthritis Annual Meeting. Um, here he is uh, presenting work uh, on looking at 
psoriasis patients with new onset joint pain. Uh, and he compared these to controls and found that they uh, uh, had a significant uh, presence of uh, grayscale uh, ultrasound changes suggestive of synovitis, as well as increased power do Doppler activity, and that this was significantly correlated with clinical manifestations of tender and swollen joints, uh, as well as uh, DAS-28 and uh, Physician Global. One of the additional findings was that many patients who did not have tender or swollen joints uh, had evidence of synovitis uh, by grayscale as well as power Doppler. And so uh, it confirms that ultrasound uh, is highly sensitive in picking up uh, early changes of inflammatory arthritis in patients with psoriasis. Another study on ultrasound uh, in psoriatic arthritis uh, looked at patients who were uh, being treated with adalimumab or methotrexate uh, and found uh, that those patients being treated with adalimumab had a greater likelihood of having improvement of enthesitis manifestations than those patients being treated with methotrexate. Moving on to some of the other therapeutic aspects of psoriatic arthritis, uh, here is a study uh, from the Corona uh, Registry uh, looking at factors which affected uh, the persistency of use of uh, TNF inhibitors in psoriatic arthritis patients. A an highly interesting finding uh, was that obesity that is a BMI greater than or equal to 30, was significantly associated with uh, discontinuation uh, of TNF inhibitors. That is, suggesting that uh, one might need to uh, dose adjust uh, background uh, uh, agents such as TNF inhibitors uh, to, in order uh, to have them maintain their efficacy uh, based on weight. Another uh, abstract, uh, this uh, one from Switzerland, uh, looked at the use of uh, oral disease-modifying co-therapy uh, and the likelihood uh, of uh, retention of TNF inhibitors in treating spondyloarthritis patients, including psoriatic arthritis. In this uh, registry, about 70% of patients were on uh, uh, TNF inhibitors as monotherapy and just over 30% uh, were using DMARD co-therapy. As you know, there's a uh, lack of evidence for methotrexate uh, or sulfasalazine or loplunamide, for that matter, uh, in treating axial spondyloarthritis. So there's a greater tendency uh, to use the TNF inhibitors as monotherapy uh, rather than with uh, DMARD co-therapy in this patient group. And we also find that in psoriatic arthritis, there's often a tendency to drop away methotrexate because of background concerns about liver toxicity uh, in psoriasis patients. Uh, what was found uh, was uh, this large proportion of patients that were indeed on TNF inhibitor monotherapy. And it turned out that it really didn't make a difference about retention uh, of drug therapy, that is, persistence of effectiveness uh, in uh, the uh, patients uh, that were on monotherapy uh, compared to those that were on co-therapy. So a take-home message is that although we have a, a general standard of using uh, background DMARs and treating rheumatoid arthritis patients and generally see better uh, results uh, uh, doing so, it appears as though in, in spondyloarthritis patients, including psoriatic arthritis, uh, that one can potentially use uh, TNF inhibitor monotherapy. Of course, one needs to take into account such factors as uh, development of HACA antibodies and so forth uh, with agents uh, such as infliximab. Uh, but other than that, it looks like uh, we can use monotherapy. Another abstract uh, uh, on therapy uh, with anti-TNFs comes uh, from the uh, Bruce Kirkham in uh, London. Uh, uh, with this analysis of the PRESTA trial. Uh, in this trial, patients with severe psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis 
uh, were treated with either 50 milligrams weekly or 50 twice weekly in the first uh, 12 weeks of etanercept. In this sub-analysis uh, of patients using the 50 milligram weekly dosing, the question was asked, uh, was there better efficacy in patients who had uh, less uh, disease uh, duration? Uh, and indeed, what was shown was that in patients that had less than two years disease duration, uh, they uh, uh, had uh, better uh, physician uh, global arthritis assessment, uh, overall arthritis activity, uh, and EQ5D uh, scores, which has to do uh, with quality of life. Uh, so there were some parameters uh, in this trial that did show uh, that uh, earlier treatment uh, yielded better outcomes. How about patients uh, who don't respond adequately to anti-TNF therapy who have psoriatic arthritis? We've seen previously a report uh, from a four-center study in the United States uh, about 20 patients treated with rituximab, and what was shown was very slight or modest efficacy in the arthritis component, but virtually no change in the skin component. Uh, at this meeting, uh, there was an abstract from the Vienna group that looked at nine patients with psoriatic arthritis treated with rituximab in the usual RA format, uh, and similar findings were shown, i.e., that there was um, some modest uh, improvement in arthritis, uh, but uh, not in the skin. So this uh, could potentially uh, be uh, a therapy in patients uh, uh, who have uh, uh, no uh, response uh, to anti-TNF agents uh, or have contraindications to it. Uh, for example, if you had a patient with uh, lymphoma uh, and psoriatic arthritis. We also learned more about the agent of primalast. This is a, an oral medication, which is a phosphodiesterase E4 inhibitor, uh, which reduces pro-inflammatory cytokines. And we've previously seen data on uh, the effect of this agent uh, in psoriatic arthritis in a phase two trial uh, using uh, 20 milligrams BID or 40 milligrams once a day versus placebo. Uh, and uh, there, was a, some of, uh, there was effectiveness shown. This particular analysis looked at whether or not the use of background methotrexate uh, along with the primalast made a difference uh, in terms of outcomes. And what was shown was that there really was not a difference, uh, that the effectiveness of the agent was very similar, uh, whether or not the patient was on background methotrexate. A caveat is that these were patients who generally were not having a, a, a good response to methotrexate. So it isn't quite the best way of looking at this question. And, and uh, really, to look at it, you need to look at patients who had, were naive to methotrexate uh, and randomizing them to, a, uh, to receiving a primalast alone, a primalast plus methotrexate, uh, and then a methotrexate alone to really uh, answer that question. But it looks like a, a primalast has, uh, is a potential place uh, uh, once we see more results from phase three work uh, and then potential approval. A very uh, uh, promising approach uh, to uh, treatment of psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis uh, is uh, through inhibition of IL-17. Uh, in this slide, uh, I remind us of the uh, T-cell differentiation pathway uh, in which uh, Th17 lymphocytes are created from uh, lymphocyte stem cells under the, uh, the influence of IL-6 and IL-23. And this cell uh, is a key producer of the inflammatory cytokine IL-17. IL-17 inhibition by secukinumab has shown significant benefit uh, in treating psoriasis uh, with uh, PASC 75 responses up uh, uh, approaching uh, 80%. Other IL-17 inhibitors, including uh, uh, the, besides uh, secukinumab, uh, which is made by uh, Novartis, but also uh, the uh, agents from Amgen and Lilly are also showing very good results in psoriasis. Uh, 
this agent of secukinumab has also shown good results in ankylosing spondylitis uh, and uh, modest results in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, Ian McGinnis presented uh, pilot data from a, a, from a small group of psoriatic arthritis patients treated with uh, just two doses of secukinumab uh, and showed a uh, trend uh, toward improvement uh, in the uh, uh, secukinumab-treated uh, patient group versus placebo, as shown uh, by ACR 2050 and 70 responses here. A, a reminder that the trial was very small and only two doses were given. Uh, and so statistical significance uh, was not seen. We're now initiating a phase three trial uh, with this agent, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll be uh, seeing uh, uh, very positive results, uh, 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 partly uh, encouraged by the dramatically positive results that we've been seeing uh, in psoriasis. Uh, one of the side effects that has been seen has ra been rare neutropenia, but otherwise uh, this agent has been uh, uh, generally well tolerated. We are excited to see agents such as uh, IL-17 inhibitors, Primalast, IL-6 inhibitors, JAK inhibitors coming along uh, for uh, the uh, p potential use in psoriatic arthritis uh, uh, in those patients that have not had adequate response to uh, anti-TNF therapy. I would like to thank you very much uh, for listening in on uh, this report about psoriatic arthritis abstracts uh, at the ACR meeting.